Hello, this is Hilary Weller. This video describes some topics in numerical analysis and how one-dimensional finite difference schemes can be analysed in order to find their theoretical stability, accuracy and conservation properties. I recommend printing out the student version of the lecture notes so that you can fill in the gaps and annotate the notes during the video. You can pause the video to do this. We will start with some definitions of terms used in numerical analysis. First of all, convergence. A finite difference scheme is convergent if the solutions of the scheme converge to the solutions of the partial differential equation as delta x and delta t tend to zero. The delta x is the resolution in space and delta t is the resolution in time. This is clearly what we need of a numerical scheme. So slightly different is consistency. A finite difference scheme is consistent with a PDE if the errors in the terms, the individual terms of the PDE um, are converged to the, um, of the errors in the approximations of all the terms tend to zero as delta x or delta t tend to zero. And the terms, the individual terms are typically anal analysed using Taylor series. Um, this is a weaker constraint. Um, it, it could be that all of the individual terms converge to zero, so they approximate the PDE, but the whole, but when you put them all together, it doesn't tend to zero. Uh, next, order of accuracy. We describe a scheme as being having order of accuracy n, being nth order accurate, if the error is proportional to delta x to the power n, where delta x is the um, spatial resolution. So we can also say it's order delta x to the power n, um, or a scheme converges to zero with order n. Stability. Um, a, a scheme is stable if errors do not tend to infinity for any number of time steps. Um, and we're going to show demonstrate stability using von Neumann stability analysis. There are some different types of stability. There's conditional stability. That's a, um, a scheme is stable only for a sufficiently small time step. Some schemes are unconditionally stable, that is, they're stable regardless of the time step. And some schemes are unconditionally unstable, so they're unstable regardless of how typically how small you make the time step. Conservation. Um, a lot of PDEs are conservation laws, so that they, the total integrated amount of the dependent variable is conserved over time. Uh, for example, um, mass and energy and potential of vorticity should be are conserved by the PDEs describing atmospheric motion. Um, are they conserved by a numerical scheme? That's something we're going to look at. Boundedness. Um, if the initial conditions are bounded between values A and B, and a bounded solution will re remain between A and B for all time. Finally, monotonicity. Monotone schemes do not generate new extrema or amplify existing extrema. So if the initial conditions are monotonic, then they should remain monotonic after the action of a monotonic numerical scheme. So we're going to um, look at some numerical solutions and try and think how if these solutions, um, if this scheme that generated these solutions, um, what, what properties it has. So this is an advection of uh, this uh, square wave profile using the forward in time centred in space advection scheme um, and just by looking at the solutions I want you to have a think about which properties this scheme might have. You're not going to be able to work it all out just by looking at the properties. I w I've given you here the, um, the average, the mean uh, quantity of phi uh, uh, here over for each time step. So I'm going to start the simulation now. Um, so it's just showing the, the time step. And it's show, the, the blue line is the, the exact solution, and the green line is the numerical solution. You can see the time step. See that the, the, the uh, integrated amount of the quantity is remaining stable. So have a think about whether this scheme looks as if it's consistent, conservative. Uh, you won't by looking. You won't be able to know the order of accuracy, but you can look at that. You'd know that if you look at the um, uh, previous chapters in this course on order of accuracy. Is it bounded? 
Is it stable? Is it monotone? Uh, well, from um, analysing the terms, the individual terms of forward in time centred in space, we know that it's consistent uh, because we know that the, um, the approximation for the time derivative um, is uh, first order accurate and the approximation for the spatial derivative is second order accurate. Um, so yes, it's consistent. Um, order of accuracy. So the I said time was first order and space was second order, so overall it's first order accurate. Is it stable? It, well, we haven't got we haven't got mathematical evidence, but based on the evidence of this solution, it's looking as, as if it is not stable. Conservative. Is it conservative? Well, the mean didn't change at all, so I'd say yes, it appears to be stable. Is it bounded? Absolutely not. Um, these. These were the initial, written it between 0 and 1, it did not stay between 0 and 1. And it's not monotone, a um, lot of new oscillations are generated here. So let's um, try modifying this advection scheme. I've modified this advection scheme by uh, just, if a, if a value is calculated which is either less than 0 or greater than 1, it's it's just edited, so it's if it's greater than if the if a value is greater than one, it's just edited, so it's one. And if a value is less than zero, it's just edited, so it's zero. So this should generate a bounded scheme because that's exactly what's um, it's supposed to be doing. What other properties does it have? So I think it's simulation again. So as is as it's um, designed, as no, no values greater than one or less than zero are generated in these oscillations here. Um, but there are still oscillations generated here because there's this flat bit here, there are these sharp discontinuities here, and oscillations generated here, um, which are still between zero and one, but there are oscillations. Um, the mean has been changing. When I edited the values so that they're so that they have to be either less than or equal to 1 or greater than or equal to 0, that's going to change the integral amount of quantity. So consistent. Um, well, I haven't thought about this a lot, but probably it's still consistent. Is it, cons is it the order of accuracy? Again, I haven't, haven't thought about that in detail. It appears now to be stable. If the solution has got to remain between 0 and 1, and the analytical solution is always going to be 0 and 1, then the errors can't tend to infinity. Um, although uh, the error is going to, that doesn't necessarily mean it's useful just because it's stable. Conservative? Well, definitely not. Bounded? Yes, it is bounded. The, originally it was between 0 and 1 and it stayed between 0 and 1. But it's not monotone. So this demonstrates the difference between bounded and monotone. These new extrema are generated here where there's this discontinuity. So, um, in order to analyse um, convergence, stability, order of accuracy, we're going to define some error measures. Uh, so, we, looking at these solutions, we can calculate errors at any individual point, but if we want to analyse the scheme as a whole, we need some integrated measure of the error, so we can have an, an estimate of the error for the whole solution. So we've got three error norms here, L1, L2 and L infinity. So the L1 error norm is the sum over the whole of the domain of the, of the error, the magnitude of the error. Um, and this is, this is integrated over the, over the whole domain and normalised um, so that it's, the error norm is not dependent on the absolute value of the function. So you've got an analytical solution f to a PDE um, and you've got a numerical solution phi. So this magnitude of phi minus f here is the error. That's the L1 error norm. The L2 error norm, um, instead of having the magnitude here, we've got the error squared. And again, that's integrated over the whole domain and normalised. So this is the um, root mean square error. Then the L infinity error norm is the normalised largest error over the whole domain. So if a scheme is nth order accurate, then these error metrics should all converge to zero at a rate proportional to delta x to the power n. So this error norm is going to be proportional to delta x to the power n. 
in order to, uh, when we looked at the, these results, we looked at consistency and stability, but not convergence. We don't yet know how to work out if a scheme is convergent. The answer is the Lax equivalent theorem, which we're not going to prove in this course, um, but it's a fundamental theorem in numerical analysis. Um, and it states that um, for a consistent finite difference scheme uh, of a well-posed initial value problem, the method is convergent if and only if it is stable. So if we can show that a, a scheme is consistent and stable, then, that, then we've proved it's also convergence. Is it, we need to prove convergence. So in this course we're going to spend a lot of time looking at consistency and stability because that's what we need to know. Um, so we need to show it's essential a scheme must be at least first order accurate um, and stable. That concludes this introductory video. The next video describes access aspects of stability related to the domain of dependence of a PDE and the domain of dependence of a numerical scheme.